And it's Wednesday night. It's another night for Quick Fix Golf at quickfixgolf.com where we get together with all our golfing buddies and go over all kinds of golf stuff and make fools of ourselves and have a good time. And here's my partner, Darren Demaley. Say hello, Darren. Hola. Hola. As, as you would say. And we have our special guest tonight, Joe Daly, PGA Tour and Pro. I mean, this guy played on the road for 25 years. 25 years. We're going to tell you more about him in about two minutes. We'll let you know who's bringing this to you tonight. There he is. That's right. Um, you know, I taught for Jack Nicholas for seven years, among many things. And there I am, played a little golf across the pond on the other side of the water, and we are both the PJ Pros. Close it to Below Bay. Below Bay. <laughs> we try to do that at the same time, but it's hard. One, one's in Richmond and one's in Myrtle. Tell us what you want them to do there, Darren. So what we need you to do is get your cell phone out and take a video of your golf swing. And we're going to take a look at it, give you analysis absolutely free, not a penny out of your pocket. We'll send you some drills, and uh, you owe it to yourself because we want you to play better golf now. And here's our guest tonight, Joe Daly. A round of applause, everybody. Yay! Hey! Some of the things he's done, among others, is he won a major. Won a major on the tour. He was a, won the Sam Snead Award in 2012, Wichita Open, Nationwide Tour, the Nike Tour. He's probably How many tours have you played on, Joe? About 100? No, not that many, but uh, but I got around to about you know, 20, 22 different countries, you know, even if it was to just go qualify to get into play. But that's how I got better. You know, you're the, you're the um, kind of guy and I'm, I'm not saying this because you're here, but I really highly respect because they're the guys that keep digging and they keep digging and they never give up and they keep playing. And uh, I, I really take my hat off to you. I'm really honored to, to have met you. So thank you, Bobby. I know your instruction philosophy and. Um, from what I saw on your website, you say you help the individual find their swing. What do you mean by that? Well, everybody's uh, – there's a lot of people that just need to have a, a little piece of information to help them hit the ball better. For me, it was uh, the years of playing in a lot of pro-ams, and, you know, you want to help the person just hit it better right away. And it could be a little alignment or posture or a lot of it comes down to grip uh for tendencies but it's just the piece of information that you can get them hitting it better right away so they're able to you know have a little bit more control and a little bit more fun uh because being in the trees or in bunkers or whatever well they're, they're fun sometimes too but um you know just that piece of information that would actually just help them hit it better right away ball position posture just the basics of what we, you know, teach our students, but it's something that is probably a tendency that they don't know. And if you just can correct that tendency, they'll help them play better right away. What do you think of that, Darren? Yeah, you know, um, th that's um, th that's so much of of the, the the modern day way people look at it. You know, I'm more of kind of a, a process based person and, and I'm a little more process based with my my teaching and uh, Todd and I were talking about this uh, yesterday in, in some of my lessons I don't even let the students hit but two or three golf balls as I want them to get in certain positions but yeah I mean it, people want to see a, a change in their ball flight and uh, you know I was talking this too yesterday with the uh, the Coastal Carolina coach and we were at PJ Hope um, but, you know, there's lots of different ways to look at it, you know, from a, a functional standpoint, aesthetic standpoint, and then uh, and results. But, you know, I, I would lean a little bit more towards the process than the immediate results. But, you know, people do want to see, you know, instant gratification. You know, when I was growing up, you went to Blockbuster Video to watch a movie and you hope that the movie was there. But nowadays you just download it on Netflix or something along those lines. So. I think there's got to be a good blend in there between the two. Now, you notice this, Steve. Do you see up at the top and left side? You see, you see, there's a little cartoon of, of Darren. He says, I have all the facts. And you see, yeah. Marty says, I oh, shut up and swing. Just <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> let him hit the damn thing, will you? Look at our buddy Joe Daly right here. Look at this. This is from Steve. Oh, you, you still got that picture? You still got. You still got that picture from the uh, the golf tournament we did? Of course, of course. That's, that was, that that's, was, that's, oh, that's wow. the manor. That's a little bit. Yeah, that's the manor. When we did, that, yeah, when we did the Chop Daddy Invitational. There you go. There you go. Now, here's the thing I wanted to ask, and, and uh, Darren, you can jump in here too. Um, 
Watch how he lays off the shaft there and when he comes down. Now, and notice one thing for all you folks that are watching. You've been playing golf for how many years? Uh, 100? 50, 52. Okay. And notice he's got a club on the ground. He's been playing golf that long. He still has a club on the ground. And look how his shoulders are nice and square to that club and his feet are a little open. So watch what he does right here. Whoops, camera moved. See, see right there? Did you do that on purpose or has that just happened? Or did you do some kind of move? Because so many people are trying to get, you know, they come down steep. And you try to shallow them out. What what exactly were you thinking when you when you make that transition right there? Well, I, I I don't know if that was a natural tendency. I grew up hitting my mom's Patty Berg nine iron when I was eight or nine years old in the yard. I grew up hitting and, my mom. Uh, yeah, well, no, I was, you know, the size I was, but that was the type of club. And then it's a good thing to use for junior kids to have them have a, uh, that shaft and that weight and that thick of the, the thickness of the grip for as a kid. But that's just the way I learned to just take it away. And I read all Hogan's books and watched the uh, IVB Golf Classic at White Marsh Valley Country Club as a kid growing up outside of Philly for years, decades. And, uh, I don't know. I just, just the way I took it back and, uh, it was just something. And I mean, I got my swing out of the ground and, uh, learned by hitting balls and, and reading about it and watching the pros, you know, do what they did. I didn't know that I did anything in a particular, that's just the way I would take it back. And I rerouted it just a little bit there, but that's just, I, I didn't intentionally do that. That's just the way I swung. Well, Darren would love to see Darren go ahead and comment on where his shaft is right now compared to that shaft on the ground. That's Darren likes that. Yeah, I do. I, I'm a big fan. And, you know, I always premise that um, the, the majority of elite players shallow the club on the way down. There are a few exceptions. You know, you've got kind of like Arnold Palmer and Sam Snead. I get it. But to me, you know, fundamental is where the majority of people are doing the same thing, the more, majority of the elite athletes. So I'm a big proponent. And I think that's a key to success when you're playing golf is when you shallow the shallow the golf club there. So I'm a, I'm a huge proponent of that. Um, and he comes right down the line. Look at that. I mean, right down the friggin' line. Look at this. Look at how nice that is. And look at how he clears the hips. Yeah, he can hit it. <laughs> you, you hit a pretty good thing. Steve, Steve, Steve's playing good golf. Is there anything else you could tell us about, about the swing here from the front or back that you'd want to tell us? It might help the average. Well, when I was younger, I remember that what we were taught was to actually drag the club about away when you had a longer club, whether it was the driver or the three wood, that you would actually brush the ground as you would take it away. And then that is what would allow you to get your width. Um, for most golfers that I've instructed and I'm finding is that they take it inside too quick and then the club gets behind them. Um, a really good drill that my coach, John Holbert, that I played with at Old Dominion gave me was the roll away drill where you put a ball behind your nine iron, let's say, and you roll that ball away and that'll get you your width. That's one of the best drills that you can do to actually get your club on plane right away without a lot of talk or anything analysis just roll the ball away and hit the ball that's sitting there um it's one of the you know it's one of the things that'll create width right away in your swing and and for me it worked very well do you hit up on the ball with a driver or down on it neither neither no nope. You catch it at the bottom good. of the arc? No, the good thing to do for me is I try to do, I try to hit the inside edge of the ball. I don't hit the back of the ball. I want to hit the inside edge. Why? Did you used to catch a lot of balls in the neck in the past? Or? No, it's just my tendency. My arc is a little bit wider on my downswing than it is. So I actually learned to actually have the mark on the face on the inside edge of the ball. And then when I would actually swing i would still focus on that but my swing would be slightly wider as i would come down and hit it oh, I with the driver the opposite of what, I'm thinking. Yeah. what do you think of all that darren 
it's, it's very interesting and and that's um you know as we talked about uh, a couple of webinars ago about with bobby clampett about yeah. what nicholas would feel and what the reality of it is so i'm sure that's exactly you know how joe is kind of feeling the swing in there anytime that i talk about the inside part of the golf ball usually it's because a, a, an amateur is uh, coming in with an open face and when you have the face open you're going to hit it uh, on the inside part of the ball. But what, what Joe does well is he swings to the right of that. So uh, even though the, the club face is a little bit open hitting the inside part of the ball, the ball is going to draw because the path is to the right of where that club face is pointing. You see how his head backs up on the way down beautifully? Look at that. Yep. Backs right up. So he gets the tip of the left shoulder. To the ball and a straight line at impact, which is where all of them are. Just about. All right, anything else you got to say about this? So we'll move on back to the slides. I guess we're going back to the slides. Go once, going twice. We exit out of here. We go back to the slideshow. How much value should be placed on distance, you think, Joe? Wow. Well, look at the way the game has changed today, and it changed back in 98. What changed the game was the was when the groove rolling, when Ping won the groove rolling against the PGA Tour and the PGA of America. That's when the game changed because look at what this guy DeChambeau is doing now. And, of course, you know, the Bubba Watson and – all these other long guys too, they've also done it too, because they can get control of the ball, even out of the rough with the grooves on the club. Whereas when we grew up, everything we had was V groove. So you hit it in the rough, well, then you couldn't control it coming out of the rough. So then the, 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 what it was, it was more of a skill to actually hit it in the fairway and then maneuver the ball into the green from there with whatever iron you had in. But length is actually definitely a premium because 